Well, uh, here I am again. Find myself sitting on a seat in my barn. And a lot has changed in the last, goodness, I guess it's, it was November. Mid-December 2019. I just made the decision to enter in a new phase of my life. Retire from pro road racing. I had a crash in March that has changed the course of, of my life and has changed the course of my career. Kind of see what the gravel race scene was all about. And then in May of, of last year, uh, I went to my first gravel race as a gravel racer, I guess. I noticed something very distinctly had changed inside of me at that race, that there was no longer a desire to win. I was racing for my own internal kind of satisfaction and desire to prove that I could do it and that I was strong enough. And then a few weeks after the rule of three, I went to the Unbound Gravel 200. Yeah, lo and behold, I won that in a sprint against Lawrence Tandam, and that, that changed a lot of things. And it felt very strange to have won probably my biggest ever race at a point in my life when I was no longer trying to win. I found, found so much more joy and pleasure in proving to those around me and to my competitors that I was strong. He's great at cleaning up dishes, but he's not the best chef. So both my brother and I learned how to cook very quickly when we were young. I guess that was one thing I remember from Unbound afterwards, that a sensation I had not had in a long time. And like for several days, is just feeling completely useless. It's something I hadn't had since like a grand tour where you're just so tired and your legs are so swollen and sore, but um, not the best feeling. I'll just sit with us. Yeah, well, I guess at the end of Unbound last year, I told all of you that I was going to be a father, um, and I didn't really know how that was going to change my life. And this has changed, because now I have no space for bikes in here anymore, because we have strollers. Well, and it has definitely changed my perspective on life, and it's brought us so much joy to you know, bring a beautiful young girl into this world. It's, I just so admire him as a father. He's just so full of love. And when you get married and like find a partner in life, you think that you found the epitome of love. And then you have a kid and your heart expands like tenfold. Being a parent has taught me that parents are incredible. Just realizing like how much time and energy goes into raising a child. Being a parent for both him and for me has made those moments that you can take for yourself really valuable. There were times when I'm like, God, oh, I'm done doing it. Like I'm not gonna race again this year. Like there's too much going on. Like there's no way I can like think about like training and traveling. But we incredibly like adapt to the situation. As Ingrid grew and I kind of came to terms with like the time I had available, I realized like I still can do this. 45 minutes till sunset. <laughs> Yeah, we're sitting here now uh, um, before Unbound and I don't really know what to expect this year. You know, last year I was very relaxed coming into the whole kind of summer series of, of races and all of a sudden I'm returning this year as the defending winner and there's this underlying sense of expectation and that's been a challenging kind of hurdle to jump over. But I just think in my mind, would going back and winning beat the sensation of what it was like last year. But I do have to remind myself that winning is not the ultimate goal and that this is meant to be fun and I think we need to make sure we keep it fun. Uh, normally we take this time to thank our sponsors and they know who they are and another we're thankful so we're going to skip that part and i'm sure many of you have heard if you've seen the velo news ad article we lost mo i believe it was wednesday evening i've been in contact with her parents her family back and forth regarding the race 
they uh, sent me a statement and they basically said, we want you all to do what Mo wants you all to do. She wants you to race. She wants you to race with passion. She wants you to challenge yourself. She wants you to have the best race ever. Watch out for one another, help each other out. So let's honor her. I certainly want to find some way that we will honor her with Gravel Locos. Two weeks ago, I was down at the Gravel Locos in Heiko, Texas, when we learned about the, the tragedy and the loss of life of Mariah Wilson. And that was really challenging and hard to just grasp what had what had happened. You know, what has come of that for me in the last you know few days has just been the realization that this doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, this is just, we're just racing our bikes and it's meant to be fun. And so quickly we can get away from the root of why we all started this. Seeing the way that the cycling community was reacting just solidified that it's, it's not just a sport, it's a family. Like everybody is watching out for each other. <laughs> My name is Molly Cameron. I use she, her pronouns. We're here at Unbound Gravel. It's been insane. It's been great. Ian speaks a lot about the importance of integrity in the sport, um, and especially after Gravel Locos, he was feeling a little bit frustrated because Gravel has gained a lot more recognition um, and drawn in a lot of younger riders. I've noticed a big change already this year in that there's been an increased focus on the performance side of it. It's gotten so refined, which in some ways is really cool because we're gonna see people go faster, but in other ways, like it's just gotten more serious. And one thing I found so beautiful is that with gravel racing and these mixed surface races, we've started something completely new. We have a new foundation, we have a new landscape to create whatever sort of ecosystem we want to build. But I also feel this responsibility to make sure that we don't lose this mindset of this is meant to be fun. This is meant to be something we share with not just the competitors immediately around us, but with the larger community of riders who are at these events. We can all go and ride 200 miles. It doesn't matter what gender you are, how fat you are, if you're skinny, if you're black or white. Or we all go through this journey together. Running and cycling are so well positioned to truly embrace and kind of implement in true inclusion and diversity. It's something that it's so delicate and I think if we lose that camaraderie of athletes seeking respect of their peers, then before you know it, gravel racing will, will turn into to road racing off-road. I want to cross the finish line, and I want to be able to look at my competitors, whether they're ahead of me or they're behind me, and, and give them a hug, give them a handshake, and acknowledge that we both had a phenomenal day out on the bike. The next frontier, I think I'm still living it. I think I'm still, I'm still enjoying what I'm doing. I think I've been able to figure out that for the first time in my cycling career, I get to choose how I do this. I get to pick the races I go to, I get to pick when I ride, how I ride, which is very refreshing. You know, I was thinking about this concept of the Frontiers film series that's focusing on the individual athletes and kind of their journey. And you know, we all have a different journey, we all have a different story to tell. I realized that through these stories that these athletes are telling, the performance isn't the key storyline in these films. And there's a lot more to being a bike rider than just winning races. And, and the results come from the hard work, but you know, it's really that shared experience that we all have. Success would be I think more so than any result would be returning and having just another clean run at it. If you can cross the finish line and realize that you did everything you could and gave your best effort, then you should be satisfied with that. And I think that that should be more rewarded than the result.